Hello, today I'm going to be talking about vibrations with the Electric Eelwheel 6. This applies to the Electric Eelwheel 6.0 and the 6.1. With the 6.1 I made some changes to help reduce these vibrations. However, the motor's a little bit faster, so overall I would say the vibrations are about the same between the two different versions. First off, let me show you what I'm talking about. So most people will not spin at full speed, and if that's you, then there's really no need to worry about vibrations too much. This is a uh, pr pretty typical speed. I mean, I don't even spin that fast. I probably spin more like this. Um, but if you are a fast spinner and you go up to full speed, then you will get some amount of vibrations. Here's an example of the vibrations at full speed and it kind of moves across the table. Now I don't have a battery in this, that would help reduce some of this. The reason it happens is uh, something that's really difficult to avoid. I would say that all spinning wheels have this problem to, to some extent. Uh, it's also common in airplane propellers, boat propellers, anything spinning at high speeds will get uh, some amount of vibration because it's, you can't get things really perfectly balanced. So with propellers for airplanes, it's pretty common after you get the propeller, to balance the prop. And I'm gonna go into how you can actually do that with the Electric Eel Wheel 6 yourself later on in the video. But first I wanna cover some of the simpler things you should try first. So first off, you wanna make sure that your hooks are directly across. If you have one hook that's significantly out of line with the other hooks, that's going to cause more vibrations. So you wanna get them as close to in line. And then when if you move this hook, with yarn, you wanna move this other hook as well. Another thing you can do is you can purchase a clamp uh, like this or some other style. I just got this one from the hardware store. And all you do is you install it like this. I've designed these flat portions on the case specifically for this. And if you clamp it to a table, that will solve your problem. So now you can spin it full speed and there won't be any moving around on the table and vibration is sort of held in one spot. That's also why heavier electric spinning wheels or heavier spinning wheels don't show this problem very much. Just the weight of them solves the problem. And related to that, if you remove the bottom cover, you could install a, a battery pack down here. That'll add some weight. That won't completely remove the vibrations, but it'll help reduce them some. You could also put um, some weights down here and that'll help further. I mean, if you put enough weight down there, it will remain stationary, but I definitely didn't want to ship it out with a bunch of weight because most people don't spin that fast and shipping the extra weight would uh, add cost to my shipping. If you want, you can add weight or you can use a clamp. I personally like the clamping solution. Another thing is sometimes the bottom case will vibrate against um, the base. And, and while you can totally use it without the base, just uh, put it on the table like this and clamp it. That'll totally work and make it smaller. If you like to have the bottom cover on, you wanna make sure that these four screws, one, two, and then two on the other side, are all sort of snug. So you can use a screwdriver to adjust the snugness. You just tighten them up a little bit and then sort of see how that works for you. So we just tighten those four up. And then you can kind of get it so that it has a nice snug feeling here. I mean, you could make it so it doesn't come off if you don't, if you tighten them enough, it, it will not come off. But there's sort of that sweet part where it kind of clicks into place and you can uh, move it on and off without adjusting the screws anymore. Now that covers sort of all the basic things. Now I want to talk a little bit about sort of the next step you can go if you want to really work on reducing the vibrations. So with the flyer here, I would take off the bobbin and you can do it with or without the hooks. I'm actually gonna show you without the hooks attached right now because I think that's a better way to get started with this process. So I mentioned earlier with propellers, you have to balance propellers on airplanes or, or on drones in order to reduce vibrations. That's just because the factory doesn't want to take a lot of time to get the props perfectly balanced or as perfectly as you can. And the end users will typically do that to a finer degree. And I guess uh, I kind of am doing the same thing here. I don't want to take every flyer and hand balance it. 
that would add a lot of cost to the electric eel wheels and I try to make affordable tools. So I ship them this way and for most people who aren't going to spin at the highest speeds, they'll never even notice. For those of you who do want to spin at the highest speeds and the amount of vibrations are bothering you, you can sort of do this next step that I'm going to talk about where we balance the flyer. So I'm just getting two flat surfaces on the table here and we need to get them spaced approximately the right. Now I'm doing this really quickly but um, so you can sort of see how it works but what we see is even when I sort of do that this arm is is going lower. I probably let me uh, rejigger this so you can see it better. This sort of shows the principle and again any flat surfaces will work but basically what's happening here is that arm is falling down uh, whereas this one is kind of coming up and what that basically means is that this arm is heavier than that arm. So what you can do is as a temporary fix you just want to add some weight to this other arm and eventually what I suggest is sort of adding a little bit of epoxy or other kind of glue uh, sort of in there is a, in the, this area here is a good spot and the farther out from the center of the spindle the less weight you need to add so you don't want to add it in here you want to add it out here and that's a good thing to do eventually but before you do that I suggest just adding some tape and sort of see how that will affect here. So now I've lost which arm is heavier. So I'm going to put this back down and we're going to do this. And yeah, that makes very clearly, you've got to start with them pretty close to level like this. And yeah, that sort of shows this one's heavier. So this is the one that I want to add some tape to. And I'm just, I've just got some electrical tape here. And all I'm going to do is add some tape to this arm. And how much? I don't really know. So I'm just going to start with maybe um, 200 millimeters of tape. And a, a good spot, I mean, it's kind of tempting to put it right here, but then the hooks won't come back on. So I, I generally like to put it right behind the um, arm brace there. And it's not going to be pretty, but it doesn't have to be pretty. Again, this is just a, a temporary solution that we're trying to sort of get the arms to balance out a little bit better. So do that. And let's see, we need to get it. So, it's, oh, it looks like I probably added too much. Yeah, so now that side is going down. So all I have to do is take off a little of this tape that I added. So you should be able to find sort of a happy medium. And you don't have to get it completely perfect, especially during this stage. Maybe when you're adding glue, you want to add it just a tiny amount at a time until things match. But just to sort of see how it's going to affect things, um, I would just, oh yeah, I can definitely tell this is better. It does seem, oh, I can't. So you need to get it sort of level and see which way it falls. And it, I think it's, it's really close now. I think it's still slightly too much, but for, for this experiment, I'm going to say it's close enough. So I added some weight to the lighter arm and now we can try it again. And just to save some time, I am not going to put all the hooks and things back on. Well, sure, I'll put the hooks back on. I won't do it on video, but let me put the hooks back on. You might want to, to save some time, uh, not put the hooks back on and test it without the hooks. It will vibrate a little less without this extra weight of the hooks. Since I did the first test in the video with the hooks on, I'm gonna put the hooks back on right now. Now we've got all the hooks back on to see how that extra weight to sort of balance out the flyer will affect things. 
Now I will say that this will not completely solve the issue. You're never going to get things so perfectly balanced that there's zero vibrations. Uh, you can't do that with propellers either. Uh, you can do better there, but the problem with these are that these arms actually flex out as it speeds up and some inconsistencies uh, in the manufacturing process just result in minute differences in how much these arms spread out and that's going to naturally lead to some uh, vibration. This tape will help and balancing things out like this will help and you can play with adding a little bit of weight inside the arms too if you would like. You can spend a lot of time doing that and I'm not gonna go through that whole process here. Like I said in the beginning, I think the, the clamp solution is <laughs> nice and easy and it, it really solves uh, the problem pretty well. So let's see how the vibrations are now. So you can still see there's some vibrations. I can't actually remember the beginning of the video too well to say how much better it is. It's something that you can definitely adjust uh, and some this will help more than others. But if the vibrations are bothering you and you want to have more portability than like a clamp or some weights will allow, then definitely try out uh, balancing your flyer like I showed here. If people have other suggestions and things that they've tried, uh, definitely leave them in the comments. I'm always interested to hear what people have tried. This is what uh, has helped me and what I've done, but uh, it's definitely possible there's other things out there that'll work better and I'm always open to feedback and I'm always looking to improve future versions and uh, come up with ways of making the current versions work better. So uh, let me know what you've tried and what has worked for you. Thanks for watching.